Modern society is facing diverse and multiple challenges. Globalization, technological changes, digital transformation, migration, as well as the demographic and climate change, just to name a few. The humanities and social sciences play a key role in overcoming these challenges. They analyze de developments and systems in society and provide orientational and practical knowledge about society. By establishing the Maria Sibylla Merian Centers, set up in India, Mexico and Brazil, Ghana and Tunisia since 2015, the idea of cooperation in specific partner countries and regions became reality. The Merian Centers offer intercultural insights, helping us to better understand societal developments and to find potential solutions for challenges facing society. Today's event is a kickoff of an international conference which is dedicated to the COP topic at the cutting edges of knowledge production, borders and black holes in academic dialogue. The great lesson of history of research is that knowledge develops from the conflict of different points of view. And therefore, a consensual view generally atrophies because it does not allow us to see the problems behind this consensus. The meaning of dialogue considered here, rather than bringing two different positions closer together so that they can get to know one another and understand one another or reach a consensus, refers to the fact of accepting different hybrid and subversive positions in order to produce a new research at the service of a horizontal interpretation of the social world. Progress is only made in the democratization and the fight against inequality if the limits are placed on exclusion. The fundamental background assumption of the uh, horizontal production of knowledge is that our being in the world is always uh, also a being with others. We human beings have to react to demands from outside, respond to others, uh, be it others, other human beings, be it uh, things around us. The main question for the production is for the, for the new is what comes into being. Research questions cannot only search or arise from the disciplines or even from single academic careers uh, as innovative research, but I probably they have to uh, search more from um, interdisciplinary problematic situations and in dialogue with affected uh, communities. Uh, which um, uh, 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 name academic um, problems. The term is being used to depict the various exchanges and conversations that one can observe in the actual world, which do not necessarily conform to the idea. A dialogues refer to a particular Sprachspiel, a life modality, in which two or more sides engage with each other by exchanging arguments and, ideally, by listening to each other. The approach to interculturality suggested here is thus one that starts from the relations between the sides and the people involved, from intersubjective and interpersonal experiences, and not from reified ideas of cultural containers. Intercultural dialogue can only happen on the level of interactions between and among subjects, and between and among the reference frames that are invoked in these encounters and that intersect and interconnect. It took a while to understand that law is not just a normative order, bringing order into the chaos of normative expectations. It is, too, that conflict resolution, predictability and stability in contingent social interactions is one of the main purposes of the law. But its latent function as Robert K. Merton might have formulated it. My argument is that communication between different legal cultures is not only necessary for, uh, for, so to say, technical reasons when you are doing transnational business or political bargaining, that's so the utilitarian justification for that, but it is an important, if not crucial, element in the processes of taking the role of the other. The mode of transmission of such musical knowledge 
could come from simple overhearing, as implied in the second half of the citation, in which Jews are warned not to play their religious songs in earshot of a Christian priest, lest he appropriate the tunes of his own, for his own religious services. Anxiety about the religious sounds of a minority community are regularly expressed in medieval legal literature, both by European Christians as they are prohibited the sounding of the Muslim call to prayer or insist that Jews not pray loudly in their synagogues. The examination of interreligious or cross-cultural encounter in the modern world encompasses digital media, music, signs, television, and movies, all modern forms of more casual exchange than the formal dialogue or debate. Such forms are no less vital in their pre-modern equivalents for our understanding of interreligious and cross-cultural encounters.